Hi everyone, it's Kai. Welcome back to my channel and today I have for you this fun celestial themed design. We are getting closer to Halloween season, but I wasn't quite ready to leave behind the pastels of spring and summer. So I put together this final kind of summery, um, springy look that includes a moving charm that I made myself. So if you would like to see how I do that, please continue watching. Go ahead and check out the links for everything I used down in the description below. Subscribe if you have not, and let's get into it. So I will be using for this design the Divock New Moon Collection. This was very kindly gifted to me by Sweetie Nail Supply. I do have a full swatch video up on my channel already. It's part of a haul that I did earlier on. I will link that in the corner if you would like to check out full swatches. But this is really the inspiration for this set. The name itself is part of what inspired me to do this celestial-like look and these polishes are honestly some of the prettiest magnetic gels that I've used. I'll talk a little bit more about them as I do the set, but yeah, I wanted to put them to good use. To start off with though, we have to prep our nails, and as I'm doing that with the Apre Nail Primer, I just wanted to share this disclaimer. Please make sure that you are doing your research on the products you are using, and that whenever possible, you wear gloves when handling uncured nail polish, gel that is, that way you can avoid any sort of contact dermatitis or allergies that you may develop from handling uncured gel for too long of a time or too often. Another reason that I wanted to make this set is because I have purchased quite a few nail charms that I just haven't gotten around to using. And I also ordered this Bonnie B Ururu sheet recently. It's for the Aurora look. I ended up not actually using it because I pulled it out and it was quite pigmented and shiny, which is actually what you want from that film. I just didn't know if it would fit with the idea I had in my head of the set. So I decided not to use it, but I will be using four different shades from the Divock collection. It's actually really good timing because they just recently released a new collection called White Knight. It is absolutely stunning. It is another set of magnetic gels that have some sort of duo shift to them with a colored base. I just love the Divock magnetic gels. I think they do such a good job with adding depth to them with the duo shift colors and whatnot. So yeah, if you want to pick up the New Moon collection or the new collection, White Knight, I will have both of them linked in the description below. I do plan on doing swatches of White Knight eventually. I unfortunately just ordered from Sweetie Nail Supply, so I'm not due for another order for maybe like a month, but I will try to pick up the collection then and do swatches for y'all. But you can use my code down below, get pressed for 10% off your entire Sweetie Nail Supply purchase, and it also helps support me too. So yeah, just a thank you to everybody who does use the code, to everybody who is here watching today. Speaking of which, this video is going to be, yes, a tutorial, but as I'm doing the base colors here, I did want to just chit chat a little bit with you all, give you some updates on life and talk about YouTube in general. So not to spoil anything, but I did a silent giveaway in my last haul video. It is still running, um, but I wanted to offer some clarification about things. So if you saw my last haul video, I announced it kind of like in the middle. I didn't want to put it in the title because I really wanted the giveaway to go to somebody who, you know, actually watches my videos. I know there are people who, you know, come across the channel who might be doing a giveaway and they'll subscribe just for that giveaway, which look, for companies, no shade at all. There are definitely um, companies that I follow that do giveaways and, you know, I don't interact a ton with their with their brand. I try to, maybe I don't have the time, um, but I will enter the giveaway. So I totally get that. I just, for my channel, yes, I have, I guess like a brand, which sounds weird. Like every YouTuber has their brand, right? But I also just kind of treat this as like my place to share nail thoughts and to meet other people who like doing nails. And so I just, I wanted the giveaway to go to somebody who 
you know, was genuinely around for the channel um, and who's shown me support because I, I wanted it to be a way to give back, you know, to the people who have been supporting me. So I wasn't really sure how to go about doing that. Um, so I did say I, I wanted it to be for people who have commented on my channel before. And I, I'm afraid that I might have um, made some of my silent watchers feel like I don't appreciate their views. And let me clarify something. I 100% understand silent watching before I really got into doing YouTube myself. I actually wasn't a big commenter. Um, I, I would watch, you know, I would sometimes like videos, but I didn't really comment on channels just because it just, I don't know, it wasn't something that occurred to me um, to do. But now that I'm making my own content and I've learned more about YouTube, I understand the importance of engagement, of liking, of commenting. So I had said I only wanted the giveaway to go to people who had commented on a video before, um, just, you know, to show my love for the people who really do take the time to engage. Um, not that I don't appreciate those of you who are silent watchers. I did want to make that very clear. I absolutely appreciate all the views, all of the love. I just, I wasn't sure how to ensure that the giveaway would go to somebody who was a regular watcher. Um, I did just learn, and I don't know if this is new, but now you can tell if somebody comments on your video, there's a way to like click on their profile and see if they've liked a video of yours before. Like it'll tell you the total number of likes that you've received from them. So that's really exciting because now I can do giveaways for not just people who have previously commented, but also people who have previously liked a video. So yeah, I just wanted to clear that up. Um, I do really appreciate everybody who watches. Even if you don't have the time to comment, I totally get that. Um, I just, I wasn't sure how to, again, make sure that that giveaway went to somebody who has been a supporter and has just been around, you know? Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, and that kind of leads me to the realities of YouTube um, and the behind the scenes. I got my first mean comment. I guess you could call it that. I don't know. Um, I do know if you're on the internet enough, um, if you get bigger, that there are always going to be people who are critics. And I, I try not to let it get to me. Um, this first comment, I'll, I'll admit it did bother me. Um, it made me a little bit sad. It was just, I'm not going to put it up here or anything. I don't want like anybody to send this person hate or anything, but it was basically just somebody saying like, oh, this giveaway is ridiculous. You know, uh, the rules are too much and it's for something really insignificant, like $20 worth, which I don't know where they got that idea. <laughs> um, by the way, it is going to be a number of Korean items along with some of my other favorites. So I think the total I spent on it was like $100 or so. Um, so yeah, try not to let it get to me. I know that to be in this space, unfortunately you do kind of have to grow a bit of a thicker skin. It's just that I've so far had an audience that's been so, so incredibly sweet, so supportive. I love commenting with my viewers and just, you know, interacting with you guys in the comments and on my discord which is linked below by the way, if you haven't checked that out. But yeah, so far all I've received is love and support. And so it did kind of catch me off guard, I'll admit. Um, but I do think, you know, it's something I will have to kind of get used to, which I hate to say, you know, I, I wish we lived in a world where people gave each other grace, the benefit of the doubt, um, where people maybe like asked questions before jumping to conclusions, but unfortunately that's not always the case. And I hate to say it like that, but I know that continuing on this, I will just have to grow a thicker skin because I can be a little bit sensitive. Um, I'll be honest. I, I've talked before about being a big perfectionist and being my harshest critic. And while that's true, um, I also do, you know, take feedback to heart. Like I, I, try to listen when people tell me something especially as a teacher like if a kid comes to me and says that they're you know having trouble with something or um if a colleague 
comes to me and suggests a way to improve, um, I, I take that feedback to heart and I, I try not to take it personally, you know, so that's just something that I'm going to have to work on and is one of the realities of YouTube, unfortunately. So yeah, um, there's that. I also just wanted to, in some ways, maybe like lift the veil a little bit on my hauls because I think there was a little bit of confusion there too. So I am super lucky to be a Sweeney Nail Supply BA. So I do occasionally get collections from them in exchange for making content. They never tell me that I have to say certain things about them. They just give me free reign to try them out. This collection, for example, the Divac New Moon collection is one of those cases. And quite honestly, without getting the, the PR from them, I definitely would not be able to do as many hauls as I usually do. Um, so when I put like the like $400 Korean nail supply haul, usually it's more like $200 plus some items that were gifted to me, which again, I'm super grateful for. I cannot thank you all enough who use my code and who enable me to purchase these sorts of hauls to offer you because at the end of the day, um, I would love to be somebody who could be spending that kind of money regularly on nails without some sort of um, brand deal or whatnot, but that's it's just not the case. And so I am really grateful. And when I do those titles, they are mostly to play the YouTube algorithm as much as I hate playing that game. So yeah, I don't ever want to feel or make people feel badly about um, like what they're able to spend their money on or what I'm able to spend my money on. I I wish I could do more giveaways. I do. Um, at the moment, I am just kind of like spending what I can on content creation though to try to help grow my channel, you know, to get more products to try for you all. And so a lot of it does just go right back into the channel. Right now, the, the commissions I'm making and the products that I'm using. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to lift the veil there, um, kind of explain the reality of the situation. I also have a nail office space that I'm working in now in the house that I live in. So I am additional rent. So yeah, I uh, as much as I would love to say, I have endless amounts of money to spend on nail supplies. Um, Unfortunately, I don't, but doing this has enabled me to try out way more than I would have. So I am just, I'm eternally grateful and I would love to someday eventually make nail YouTube, maybe a full-time job, at least for a while. We'll see though. Uh, I know that not everybody's lucky enough to be able to do that. Not everybody um, has that opportunity. And so We'll see. We'll just see. Right now, I'm just enjoying doing what I can when I can, getting out a video maybe every week if I'm lucky. I've been pretty good so far, but we'll see. We'll see as the year goes on. I'm going to try to keep with a video a week schedule, um, but with holidays coming up, that probably will fall off. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about some of the, the struggles behind the scenes. I think a lot of us who watch YouTube um, maybe sometimes tend to forget, I know I do, that like the people behind the content, even if the content looks really clean or if their life looks really put together um, in front of the camera, that that's, that's not always the case. Um, people have lives outside of YouTube and that their lives are probably just as messy, um, just as confusing as you know ours are so yeah i wanted to just be a little bit more upfront with you all um and maybe this helps if you are on the path to content creation if you are trying to start a channel if you are you know somebody interested in youtube i just want you to know the struggle is real for sure um <laughs> there are a lot of you know issues um that come up when making content creation from you know when do you invest in better equipment 
uh how do you navigate creating thumbnails balancing kind of like clickbaity things and um things that feel more personal that's a big thing i struggle with i i know that i could follow a specific formula and probably get some more views which is why i'm trying to show my face a little bit more i know that people just like being the face behind the content creator i'm somebody though who quite honestly i dislike being on camera and so i'm trying to ease my way into it um but that's something i struggle with is just balancing that you know algorithm content creation formula with uh with me so yeah hopefully that helps you all if you are on a content creation journey and if you're not um hopefully i didn't pour you too much with my little uh tangent there i just again i just wanted to be a little bit transparent with you all um and help you understand what really goes on you know behind the scenes and what's the deal with like the hauls and the pr because i always want to be upfront if i'm receiving pr because i do understand that that might um change people's mind about how i review things i will say personally i'm always going to tell you if there is a real problem with the product i've specifically not continued to take pr from certain brands that i just like i tried once and it was fine i just wasn't the biggest fan of and there are some products that i have received from brands that i've just talked to them about and said hey you know i I couldn't really get this to work for me and I don't feel comfortable sharing it. So yeah, I try to be transparent with you all. Um, speaking of which, I recently did a video with some maniology PR for the first time. I'll link that up above if you would like to check it out. I really love their stamping polish. This is not their stamping plate because I wanted to use this one specifically for this design, but their stamping polish is really nice. It's very thick very creamy it dries down quick enough to where stamping is no problem but it's not so quick drying that i can't get a good um layer of it on the stamp so yeah again speaking of pr this is one that i really enjoyed that i'm happy to share with you all and i love their little card their card is a lot thinner than others that i've used their scraper card which means you can get a really nice clean scrape so yeah check out maniology I'll link their polish down below so you can use it for yourself. I also have a code for them too. Okay, so I think that was most of the personal stuff that I wanted to talk about. I, again, I, I want this channel to be a place where I can just talk nails, talk life, talk, you know, YouTube content creation, basically just keep almost like an online journal of my journey through nail art and through content creation. So. I hope you all don't mind that I share my thoughts, my experiences, and hopefully it's not, you know, too boring or too personal um, because I overall, at the end of the day, I do want this channel to just be an expression of me, if that makes sense. But yeah, now we can actually talk about nails. So I have all my base colors done. This is a brand new matte top coat from May Mode. It's a brand that's new to Sweetie Nail Supply. This one was sent to me to try out. It is marketed as being perfect for colored pencils and for chrome application. It is definitely unlike any other matte coat that I've used before. It's not meant to be like a final matte finish. It's specifically for art. So you can tell here probably that it's really quite cloudy. And I think that has to do with the end texture the end result is this super ultra smooth surface where dust does not cling to it at all. I had no problem getting the extra chrome off of this. However, because it is slightly cloudy, I would not recommend using it over a cat eye gel like I did here. I noticed that there was just a slight bit of cloudiness when it cured. And so it did take away a little bit of that cat eye shine. Unfortunately, I should have tested that before going into this set, but yeah, perfect for chrome. I just would not recommend it over a cat eye gel. This is a Diami mirror powder. I wanted to try this to compare it to the Jello Jello Edge Gel, 
My observations are that it is quite a bit thinner than the Jello Jello Edge Gel. It will still create texture, which you'll see here with the lines that I'm making, but it does not hold its shape like the Jello Jello Edge Gel does. It is thinner, which I actually think is really good for the stars that I do later. But just know if you want more texture, I would go with the Jello Jello Edge Gel. If you want slightly smoother chrome designs, like smoother chrome lines, then I would recommend this product. I'm actually using it over that stamped pattern just to add a little bit of extra um, detail to the stamp. I think it's a really fun way to add some dimension and some extra detailing to a stamped design. Stamped designs are awesome, I love them, but I'm a big fan of texture and so this just lets you add some 3D texture. And then here I'm painting on just a little moon and some stars because I wanted to emulate this design here that I saw on Pitch a Nail Design from Instagram. I love that page's work. They do some awesome things with nail art and they just did a hand painted design and put one of those huge glass crystals on top and it magnifies it in such an interesting way. So that's what I was going for here. I did the design a little bit too close to the sidewall of the nail though. So you'll see in a little bit, I end up actually going back and filing it away and then redoing it. But such is life, um, that's what happens when I experiment. Here I'm just doing that, that trending moon cat eye design where you take a cat eye gel and you put it in a circle in the center of the nail and then you create like a chrome crescent moon around it. So I'm just drawing out that moon shape thick layer of the mirror gel and then I'm kind of extending the curved lines around the edge of the, the moon just for, I don't know, just to help fill up the space a little bit. I hate that you can't really see what I'm doing because the edge gel, or sorry, the mirror powder gel is clear, but I'm just dotting on with a dotting tool a little bit of the gel and then I'm pulling my liner brush through the center towards the edges to create my stars. That's my favorite way of doing four pointed stars. And here I'm using my favorite gold chrome, the Nail Bio Gold Chrome Powder to buff that in after curing this for 30 seconds only. And as you can see, mirror powder gel really just pulls that powder in. It sticks really nicely to the surface. I had no issues with getting the chrome powder to stick and then wiping away the extra with that May Mode matte top coat underneath was super easy. Again, I'm really impressed with this top coat for chrome, especially since I can wipe it down with alcohol a few times if I need to. Like I have to do that here. I had to file away at this design because I didn't like the placement. And sometimes if you wipe down a matte top coat that's a non-wipe with alcohol too much, then it does get sticky and then the chrome powder will start sticking, but I didn't necessarily have that issue with the May mode. You can see here, I just take a sponge and all of it just away super cleanly, super neatly. So yeah, big fan of that for chrome application, just not over a cat eye gel. I do have one that I recommend for a cat eye gel and we will get to that later, but yeah, it did cloud over the, the cat eye shine a little bit. And now for my favorite part of the set. So I had purchased these little spinning charms, I guess, off of Timu forever ago. And I've been wanting to use them since. And I thought, what a perfect time to make a little gyroscope. And so I had these little metallic charms. They came in a set. I'll try to find the link to them. I'm not sure if I can though. And I tried to bend some into shape. I know that this gyroscope isn't going to be spinning the correct way because normally you would spin it on the, the pointed ends, but for the sake of like getting the design across in a way that makes sense on the nail and having it look like a gyroscope, I had to have it spinning on its side. That's one of the things about design that's kind of interesting is sometimes the concept actually looks better in a design, even if it's not accurate to real life, because you want the concept to get across, even if it's not the same as what it would actually look like in real life. 
I figured out that I could just cut out the middle of these like little moon decals that a lot of you probably have seen before and use those for the circular portions of the gyroscope. So I cut a couple of them apart, I bended them to look correct, and then I attached everything with the Jinbi Ivy Fix Gel. And let me tell you, this is not the most sturdy charm. I did try to really glue it together well um, by adding a lot of the gel over the top of the different parts, layering it to ensure it's nice and sturdy, but it's definitely not. Um, if I were to do this again, I might not find, I know there's an adhesive that is like a cold soldering method for metal, which might seem extreme. It probably is. But if I do really want to get into like a lot of metal work, a lot of uh, charm creation, that might be something to invest in. I don't know. I'll, I'll take a look and see. But yeah, even with the amount of gel that I tried to put over both sides, where these pieces attached, I did actually have some breakage and I had to go back and reattach the different parts with the gel. So yeah, it's not the most sturdy the way it is. I think you could make it sturdy with a different type of adhesive, not necessarily a nail adhesive, but yeah, we'll see. Um, it worked for now and I could get it to spin, which was the big part. Here I'm just attaching the horizontal arch. This is another just piece from that set of gold studs that I had. You can probably find them on Amazon. I'll try to link them below. I don't know if I can though because these ones I got maybe like four years ago around the start of my nail journey so I'm not sure if I can find them anymore. But I just added a little gemstone in the middle, purple to match the rest of the nail set. And I had originally planned on those beads on the, the outer rim, but I forgot to, and I didn't want to take this apart and glue everything back together. So I just added a little crystal instead, and I'm pretty pleased with the results. Here's me trying to figure out what other sorts of decorations I wanted. Unfortunately, this chain was just a little bit too much of like an orangey yellow, so I did not end up using it, but I stuck the charm on, and then I decided I wanted to do another like matte to clear texture on the nail. So I went in with the Devoc Zero Matte Top Coat. Now this one is a favorite of mine for chroma application. It does, however, get a little bit tacky if you wipe it down too many times with alcohol. However, it does not have the same cloudiness of the May Mode Top Coat, uh, or sorry, Matte Polish. It's not really a top coat. so. I would recommend this one if you're going to work with cat eye gel underneath the chrome. Uh, just make sure again that you're not wiping it down too many times with alcohol. It is non-wipe, you don't need to do it at all, otherwise some of the chrome does start to stick a little bit. And then I pulled out my trusty Jin B Crazy Top and I used that to affix the large glass crystal to that middle nail. I just put a blob of the gel over the pattern I created and then stuck the crystal on. Cured that with my Diami Pin Cure Lamp. And I really like the effect of this. I want to try this more because I have a ton of these large crystals that I really wasn't sure what to do with. And I love the way that this magnifies the pattern underneath. I think it's just a really cool texture, a really cool look. So yeah, I'm super pleased with how this nail turned out. I just top coated it and then I move on to doing that moon nail. Because that main mode kind of clouded over the cat eye gel underneath, I added another thick layer on top, gave it a good magnetization after letting it sit for a while so those particles could settle together and self-level, and then I cured that. And then over the magnetic gel, I just took large dollops of that Jinbi crazy top thick and I created like a 3D bubble. This just really brings out that cat eye gel shine, adds some depth, makes it look very planet-like, very galaxy star-esque. So I love this method. The Jinbi crazy thick top just makes it really easy to do textured 3d nail art like this because it is non-wipe so 
highly recommend it as a staple for any nail artist looking to get into 3D nail art. Here I'm just sealing in a charm that I'd placed on that pinky finger before giving that a good top coat with the Mayo Glass top coat, which is my favorite thinner top coat. I have a lot of favorites when it comes to thick consistency top coats, but not a lot of thin ones. So this is the Jello Jello Edge Gel, and again, in comparison to the Diami Mirror Gel, this just holds its shape a little bit better. I had wanted to do like a textured swirl over the matte top coat for these nails. I really like doing this over cat eye gels because it means that you can see the sparkle of the cat eye gel just under where you swirl the polish. However, I think because I had so many layers of like cat eye gel polish and the marbling inks, it wasn't giving me the exact effect that I wanted. Like it wasn't as um, different between the mattified area and the area I applied the Jello Jello Edge Gel to. So I did go in with some more chrome powder a lot. I know this one I actually got off of Amazon and I love it to this day. It's really nice. It's like a unicorn chrome with a pink teal sort of shift to it. So I applied that over the Jello Jello Edge Gel. You can see how nicely that texture shows through. And then I went ahead and glossy top coated everything. So this nail has like two unnecessary coats of mattifying top gel over it. Sometimes that happens when I'm doing a nail design. I'll change midway through, but overall, um, I still really like how it looks. And I really like the look of like pierced nails. And so I went in with my Melody Susie Drill. I did review this one as well, give it a full review, but it has all the things you want reverse button, a pause button, and up to 35,000 RPMs. So I will link the review video above if you want to check that out. I go in and I just drill two little holes in the ring finger and the thumb finger. I originally had wanted to attach like some sort of dangling charm to it, maybe some square charms that I had, some square decals, but I realized I was out of gold jump rings. So I had an improv. I used to make jewelry as a hobby. And so I had some of these like gold hoop earrings in my closet of jewelry supplies and my jewelry pliers. These are like a round nosed plier meant for making various sized rings. So I had to improv some golden jump rings. I do not recommend doing this, by the way. I would just go to Michael's and get some. I actually tried to, but they were completely out. So. That will have to wait for now i just in my own and i thought maybe i would attach these little uh square and rectangular charms to the end i didn't end up liking how it looked so i just left them as the jump ring through the nail and cut away the uh the square charm it just didn't give me the look that i thought i wanted sometimes that happens but i do like the little piercings with just the jump rings and I've been watching a lot of Tamara from the Double Wears Press-Ons recently. I love her channel. She's awesome. Um, and what I should have done is what she does with her jump rings, which is taking like these little flat circular studs and putting them over the drilled holes that you've created. They almost look like grommets on the nail and they just make for a really seamless jump application. I just forgot quite honestly until I was already done with applying the jump rings with doing my top coat of the nail next time i will try to do that and i should have done this sooner but melody susie recently sent me their new dust collector and i wanted to try it as i filed down the free edges of the nails and did my last little bit of filing cleanup i really should have used this um when i was drilling the holes because i made a bit of a mess but yeah this thing is super small super lightweight it's about the size of my hand, as I show here. You just plug it in, it comes with the adapter and everything. It is a filter dust collector, so it does say that the filter is reusable and to replace it every um, two to three months. I think that would depend on how often you use it. It has three different speed settings, which is awesome. The suction is really good. Like I could feel it pulling my hand in and it definitely made sure that I was collecting all of that dust in the collector. 
I do have the Loma Linda collector from Sweetie Nail Supply. That one is a lot more pricey. However, I will say these two for me fit in different use categories. So this one here I would pull out if I'm just doing like what I'm doing here, which is filing down the free edge, doing just a tiny bit of filing that, you know, doesn't need a lot of cleanup. I would just pull this out because it's so easy to do so. However, since I got the Loma Linda collector from Sweetie Nail Supply, I really enjoy the fact that there's no filter. It's a water collection system. Um, here I'm just showing you kind of the suction power, but the Loma Linda one is a water collection filter. Um, so you don't need to have like a replaceable filter. It all just falls into this water reservoir. And that way when you're cleaning it up, you don't risk re-aerosolizing all of the dust or anything. Don't get me wrong, this one was super easy to clean up. I just popped off the top, took the filter out, shook it out over my trash. But there is an element of that dust still could aerosolize when you shake it out. And if you like tip it over on accident, right, you've got dust everywhere. So yeah, I would say this one's amazing if you're somebody who um, is not doing too too much filing and maybe you don't need to replace the filters that often it is really great for its price that's for sure and it's super convenient and small and compact but if you are somebody who doesn't like dust collectors with filters check out the loma linda one and that is finished set so here's a closer look at all of the nails I am really happy with how this turned out. I absolutely love this color combo. I'm a huge fan of pinks, purples, blues, greens. So this one just was right up my alley. I love the New Moon collection and I am so excited to try the White Knight collection because I have a feeling it's gonna have that same like duo shift goodness to it. But that will have to wait until my next haul. I really thank you all for being here, for listening to my randomness, my rants. Hopefully you find some of this helpful because overall that is what I want is just a space where I can share my nail journey and hopefully help you all along the way. Check out all of the products linked below along with my socials discord if you would like to connect there. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye.